Happy Sunday morning, friends. I am so glad that you are joining us for another Sunday of Pajama Church. If you guys are new with us, my name is Natalie. And if you are returning, you will notice that we have a brand new set for this month. And like always, every single time we have a new month, we have a brand new theme. So for the month of October, our theme is to be truthful with our whole selves. And you might be thinking, well, what does that really mean? Or, or what does that look like? And John and Brandon in the So and So show today are gonna teach us about two characters in the Bible. You might have heard of them or they might be new to you. One is Daniel and the second one is King Nebuchadnezzar. It's kind of a tricky one to say, King Nebuchadnezzar. So we are gonna learn about those two characters and how Daniel was able to remain true to himself and to honor God through the process. So stick around so we can learn our Bible story today. And then we are gonna go visit our friend Virginia. And Virginia is gonna help us answer the question, how would you like your friends to describe you? And I think that's a really good question as we kind of look at what does it look like to be truthful to ourselves? And how does that relate to how our friends describe us or how would we like for them to describe us? So stay with us so we can visit our friend Virginia to see what she has to say. We'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay. I like to go swimming. Uh, my favorite snack is apricots. Uh, I always forget to mail my dad a birthday card. Oh, okay, those are those are good ones. Um, what's the lie? What's the lie? Swimming, swimming. You don't really like swimming. Actually, I do. Like oh, the lie no. was the birthday card. I'm I'm pretty great about remembering birthdays. Okay, go. Okay, okay, wow. Okay, it's uh, that's impressive. Okay, my turn. My turn. I have hair. I wear glasses. I'm immune to gravity. Okay, that's a tough one. Uh -huh. uh, I'm gonna have to go with the gravity thing. Oh, yes. How do you know? I, I don't know. All right, all right. Here you go. Here, Here you go. go. Okay. I hate pepper jelly. I used to be afraid of chipmunks. I own 42 copies of the book The Hobbit. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I know this one. I know it's The Hobbit. That's because you only own 39 copies of The Hobbit. Do you count my books? I am the son of an astronaut. I eat chocolate pudding at 3 a.m. And I have 12 toes. Okay, the game is two truths and a lie, John, not three lies. Neither of your parents is an astronaut. You wouldn't eat chocolate pudding at 3 every morning because you always need help opening your pudding cups. And as far as the 12 toes, I think I would have known. You don't know how many toes I have? You don't know. I mean, I'm pretty, no, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. I'm gonna show him. No, 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 no. Hey everyone, I'm Brandon. <laughs> and I'm John, and welcome to the Sue and Sue Shoe. <laughs> You're so funny. He's so funny. The so-and-so show, John. <laughs> but he's right. Welcome to our most devoted, loyal, happy audience who always warms our hearts, gives us purpose, and makes us feel so cheerful. Wow, you are in a good mood today. I'm always in a good mood, John. Really? <laughs> I'm the peppiest person I know. Oh, you must not know a lot of people. <laughs> what was that? Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Any minute now. Any minute now what? Oh, I'm, I'm interviewing later today to be a member of a very prestigious society. Oh. The interviewer should be here any minute now. What's the society? Oh, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're being sincere. Yeah, of course I'm being sincere. I'm a sincerely perpetually peppy person. You? I am! Okay. Okay, maybe I'm not always peppy. 
but anyone who's anyone is a member of the SOS PPP, and I prefer being a perpetually peppy person who's popular, plus it looks really good on a resume. So if you'll just make me look good in front of the interviewer, I would really appreciate it. Do you think you can do that for me, best friend in the whole world? Um, sure. All right. Hello, peppy people! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Samantha, and I'm the Senior Assistant Selector for the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People. Well, welcome, welcome. Oh, you must be Brandon. Oh, what? No, no, I'm John. Uh, this is Brandon. Yes. Oh, oh. Hi, I'm, I'm the Brandon that you, were, the person you wanted to see when you, when you, well, I'm, I'm the, he, he's me. <laughs> it is a pleasure, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> sit, sit, yes. sit, sit, sit. I am sitting. No, what no. Oh, 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 hey, hey, sit down. Oh. I mean, would you, uh, here, have a, have a seat. Here. Oh, okay. There oh, you go. Okay. On, the, on the chair that there's, <laughs> Thank I was putting Thank out you. for you. Let's go, let's go. Yeah. So, how are you doing today, Brandon? Splendidly. I'm so good because of, you know, all of the... The, the, the birds and the sunshine and the happy, happy thoughts. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, so happy this morning, I barely recognized him. Oh, John. I, I mean, I mean he, you know, I looked at him and I said, whoa, who, who is this? Please stop helping me. I, I really like your club. Yeah. Oh, well, thank too. you. We at the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People pride ourselves on our constant cheerfulness, happiness, peppiness, merriment, glee. And bliss. D don't those all mean the same thing? <laughs> Let's get to the interview, shall we? Oh, I love interviews. Actually, it's more of a game. Oh, I love games. <laughs> yeah, me too. Can I play too? Of course, awesome. of course. So I'll hold up a photo, and you say the first thing that pops in your head. Oh, I love saying the first thing that pops into my head. I do it all the time. Uh, uh, door. <laughs> uh, lamp. Uh, uh, giant pencil. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, so photo number one. Uh, Brandon, you go first. Uh, okay, uh, sleep. No, I only say that because sleep is what I want to do when I watch soccer. I mean, it's not a negative thing. Sleep is important for your health. <laughs> okay, um, try to keep your answers to one or two words, okay? Oh, right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right. right. Um, John? Uh, fun. Okay. Numero... Dos. Uh, uh, brain freeze. Yummy. Mm. Three. Uh, oh, loud. Uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Ants. Oh, watermelon. Um. Uh, oh, oh, expensive. Party. Um, excuse me. Uh, Brandon, are you okay? Of course. Why? Well, it just seems your answers don't seem particularly perpetually peppy. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. I think I'm just nervous. I mean, you're the senior assistant selector. If I'd have known they were bringing the SAS of the SOS PPP here, I'd have been more personally prepared to be perpetually peppy. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Yeah. But just so you know, the Society of Sincerely Perpetually Peppy People isn't for everyone. Some people are only peppy periodically, and that's okay. It is? Certainly. You know, some people only want to join the society because they think it'll make them popular. What? I know, I know. But what really matters is staying true to who you are. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, let's get on with the game, shall we? Uh -huh. All right, I just have one more picture. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's Bible, Bible story time with Galen. Hey guys. Hey Galen. Hey Galen. I am very excited for our story today. So let's jump right in. Take it away. Okay. Over 2000 years ago, around 600 BC, there was a kingdom called Babylon with a king named Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar was not exactly a good guy. In fact, he was pretty evil. King Nebuchadnezzar, you know what? That's a really long name. So I'm just going to call him King Nebi. 
King Nebi and his army surrounded and attacked the city of Jerusalem, and he stole from the temple of God. Then King Nebi gave the order to take some of the Israelites hostage so they could be his personal servants. He wanted only the smartest, strongest, and healthiest to be brought to Babylon as captives to learn his ways and serve him at his palace. One of the men captured was named Daniel. Daniel wasn't exactly a superhero. He was just a person like you and me, but he was put to a big test. As part of their training, the men who were captured were ordered to eat food from the king's table. This food was different than the food they normally ate to honor God. And Daniel and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, believed the king's food would make them unclean. So Daniel asked an official for permission to eat something else. But the official was afraid that if Daniel and his friends didn't eat the king's food, they would become weak and unhealthy. But Daniel was determined to stay true to who he was and to honor God no matter what. So he convinced the guard to give him and his friends only vegetables and water for 10 days. And after the 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked stronger and healthier than everyone. After that, Daniel and his friends were allowed to eat the food they wanted. God gave these four men knowledge and understanding. They became some of the wisest men in the kingdom. It may not have been the best circumstance. Daniel and his friends had lost their homes. They'd lost their freedom. But with God's help, they kept their honesty and their integrity, and they stayed true to who God made them to be. The end. What a cool story. Yeah, even with all that pressure to be like everyone else, Daniel chose to be himself. You find a lot of that in the Bible. Look at Jesus. It would have been really easy for Jesus to go along with the crowd. But instead, he only lived the way he knew was true, even if it meant giving his life up for you and me. Incredible. Thanks, Kellen. Hey, see you next time, Kellen. No problem, fellas. Bye. Bye. John. You were right. Whoa, you think I was right about something? <laughs> do, do go on. No, it's about the society of sincerely, perpetually peppy people. That's not me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, no, it's not, and I'm okay with that. I mean, it's great to be happy and peppy, but it's also good to have other emotions too. And I'd rather be myself than try to fit into some club. That's awesome. Brandon, I am very proud of you. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. I'm practically perpetually proud. Okay. I am positively pleased. Okay, stop. Reveal the question. How do you want people to describe you? That's interesting. How do I want people to describe me? What do I want to be known for? I, I, I want to be known as the life of the party. The guy who can, you know, stick out his tongue and touch his nose. And I want people to describe me as someone who's sometimes peppy, sometimes not, and that's okay. <laughs> what about you? How do you, how do you want people to describe you? Hey, look, I did it. I stuck out my tongue and I touched my nose. Yeah, that's very, very that's talented. Good. We'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. Yeah, bye. Please place the pleated pressed pants on the plain pressing plant. A pack of pesky pixies. A pack of pesky pixies. Frothy fructose. Frontogenesis. <laughs> that, was, that was fructose. September. Mom makes mash m marmalade. Gum gets gooey. Gum gets gumptious. Gooey gumptious gum is gargantuanly gooey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Six and a half, 
and I talk to God about what I'm thankful for, like my bed, my bike, my desk, and my family and friends. And I want to show you my dragon costume and little dragon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Daniel, chapter 1. Daniel was only a very young man when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon conquered the land of Judah. Nebuchadnezzar made sure that God's people wouldn't rebel by taking Daniel and other young men from royal families in Judah and marching them back to Babylon with him. Will we ever see our home again? Daniel's friends were just as scared and confused as he was. Where will we live? What will he do to us? I sure hope the food is decent. Daniel tried to reassure them as the imposing city gates rose ahead. God will be with us, whatever happens. The king chose the brightest and best young men from Judah and ordered that they receive special training. After three years, you will get to be very important and serve me. The chief official Ashpenaz took charge of Daniel and his friends. <laughs> tut tut, those wishy-washy Hebrew names just won't do. You need new ones. New what? 
names. <laughs> Let's see. Daniel, we'll call you Belteshazzar. And you three will be Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Are those names, or is he just sneezing? You'll learn our language, of course. And all the Babylonian writings? <sighs> Daniel's heart sank as he realized what was happening. The king wanted Daniel and his friends to forget they were God's people. He wanted them to become Babylonians. But Abednego was worried about something else. Hey, I, I'm about to starve. Any way we can get a bite to eat? Mm -hmm, right this way. Ashpen has led Daniel and his friends to a big table set with mouth-watering foods. Mmm, steak. Or those Babylonian buffalo bites. The cake's got at least nine layers. Only the best straight from the king's table. <sighs> oh, the food smelled delicious. But Daniel pulled his friends aside. Guys, if this food is from the king's table, that means it's been offered to false gods first. Uh-oh, not good. Our new names and training are one thing, but if we eat this food, it's like we're saying we're okay with false gods. But we gotta eat something, man. We can ask for different food, simple stuff that hasn't been offered to the false gods. But that chocolate cake! A bread that go? Okay, okay. Daniel and his friends turned back to Ashpenaz. They tried to ignore the delicious smells wafting from the table. Uh, this all looks great, but could we eat something that's not from the king's table? It doesn't need to be anything fancy. The king is my master. He's decided what you must eat and drink. What if you don't eat this and he sees you looking worse than the other young men? He might kill me. No matter what Daniel said, Ashpenaz was too fearful to listen. So Daniel approached the guard assigned to take care of them. Please, just test us for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. See how we look then. Hmm. Well, if Brussels sprouts are your thing. For 10 days, the guards gave Daniel and his friends nothing to eat but veggies and water. I could get into the habit of cabbage. I like broccoli, probably. Pa pass the peas, if you please. I just want a hamburger. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy to say no to all those delicious foods the other young men got to eat. But at the end of 10 days, the guard called everybody out. Line them up. He strode past the other young men. Good, good. I can see you've been eating well. When the guard reached Daniel and his friends, he stopped in surprise. What? You've been eating rabbit food, but you look even better fed than the others. <laughs> Daniel smiled. God had helped them grow strong even without eating the food offered to false gods. Okay, fine. You can keep eating veggies and water. Rats. Thank you. God continued to give Daniel and his friends knowledge and understanding as they studied, and at the end of their training, they were brought before the king. Let's see what you know. How many inches in a meter? 39.3701. Hmm. What do you call a group of porcupines? A uh, prickle. If it takes eight men ten hours to build a wall, how long would it take four men? No time at all, because the wall's already built. Hmm. How are you all so smart? The one true God gives us wisdom. Hm, well, we'll see about that. Anyhow, you're ten times smarter than my other advisors. You get to be very important and serve me. Daniel and his friends eventually became the king's most trusted advisors, and even though they served the king of Babylon, they never stopped standing strong for the one true God in everything they said and did.
Philippians 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Welcome back, friends. So I'm curious what you all thought of Virginia's answer this morning and to how would you like a friend to describe you? And we would love to hear your responses too. So talk to a caregiver in your home and feel free to give us some responses on our Facebook or Instagram page. We would love to know what you guys think. So as we wrap up our first Sunday in the month of October, I would love to close this out in prayer. So I like to close my eyes and bow my head and you guys are welcome to either join me, you can repeat the words after me or you are even welcome to say your own prayer. So I'm gonna close my eyes and I will lead us out in prayer this morning. Ready? Okay. Dear God, thank you so much for bringing our friends together this morning. Thank you for sharing the story of Daniel with us and reminding us that we can remain truthful to who we are and who you created us to be. Help us be our whole truthful selves, God, and help us to continue honoring you. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen, friends. I am so glad that you could join us this morning, and we cannot wait to see you next Sunday for another morning of Pajama Church. Have a good week, friends.